Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It's time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It's Thursday, the 21st of October, 2021. We have a little bit more to talk about today, so let's get on with it, shall we? First stop along the tour, National Hurricane Center homepage. Nothing in the Atlantic for now, but I do believe there is a decent chance that that changes for somewhere in this region over the next 10 to 12 days, and that might seem like a long way out, I will explain further as we progress through the discussion today, all right? So we'll save that for later. Uh, Of more immediate concern is Invest Area 92E in the Eastern Pacific. This is going to eventually go on to become probably Hurricane Rick, probably. You never know, right? You know, the sheer and dry air problems for Pamela made that for a very interesting intensity uh, forecast nightmare. But we'll see. Every one of these systems is different. No two are exactly alike. This is going to take shape in a little bit of a different area than Pamela did. And uh, we'll see what happens. Nevertheless, 50% chance over the next 48 hours, 90% chance of development beyond that time frame. And you can see the overall area that that it is expected to track through. And it could pose issues for southern Mexico here. We'll have to wait and see. Does it just go on out? into the open Pacific? Is it able to turn north like the GFS is suggesting? Uh, A few question marks associated with it, but we'll see what happens. You can see on the um, guidance here, uh, looking like it could become a hurricane according to the ship's guidance, especially there. That is the statistical modeling. Not a lot of other models run just yet. We'll get the H4 from the HMON. Those are hurricane-specific models. Eventually, looking at the satellite animation of it this afternoon, it's coming together fairly nicely to the south of the southern coast of Mexico. Nothing over in the Caribbean, and uh, we contrast that to what we had last year at this time. It was very busy. We were getting ready to have Zeta that would eventually form and come up here and impact southeast Louisiana and the Mississippi area as a very impactful event. Elsewhere, though, things are pretty quiet, just some convective activity in limited quantity and intensity down in the vicinity of the coast of South America and the southern windward islands. Just nothing organized out there. That's the bottom line. We're not seeing anything come together, and that is reflected nicely on the vorticity signature this afternoon. Absolutely nothing down here in the Atlantic really coming together. It's all over in the eastern Pacific with 92E, and I don't see that changing for the Atlantic in the next five to seven days. But beyond that time frame, that could be a little bit of a different story. And again, we'll talk about that towards the end of today's update. So the sheer change map over the last 24 hours. Uh, here's Central America right here. I'll just kind of outline it for you. Just say so get your bearings. There's the Yucatan. And here's the other side on the Pacific. And just to kind of outline it for you right there. All right, it's like kindergarten where I tried to keep within the lines, right? So there is the decrease of shear. That's what the darker colors show on this particular graphic from the University of Wisconsin. I will just kind of highlight it all in red in here. So this is an area where it's favorable. Everywhere else, forget about it. The shear is just too high. So this one system, 92E, taking shape in the one area where there's a pocket of general favorability. Nothing in the Caribbean. It's not terribly strong through here, but there's nothing there to take advantage of not too terribly strong shear is what it comes down to. So this is uh, in an interesting area of development, not used to seeing it in freaking late October. Um, the anomalies map, this is also interesting. you got the La Nina going on to the south, 92E developing right up here. Again, in the one oasis of warmer than average sea surface temperatures, there's a little bit of a dent put in that from Pamela last week. Uh, that tried to erode that away a little bit. So it's just an interesting situation. You had Pamela, and now we're going to probably have Rick in here. Instead of over on this side of the landmass, it's on the Pacific side. It's just one of those weird things. Don't really know how to explain it. Not too many complaints, I'm sure, for people in the Atlantic Basin. Because, boy, just looking at this again, water temperatures are definitely above the long-term average all through here. And if anything was out there, it would have plenty of fuel to take advantage of. But as we've said and as we know, there's nothing out there, so we don't have to worry about it right now. So looking ahead a piece in the Pacific, this is the area to watch right in here. This is the 
uh, Genesis area of what will eventually be Rick. It does appear in the Eastern Pacific. And just looking at the GFS here from the 12Z run today, you see it comes together, strengthens pretty quickly, and moves north pretty quickly to make landfall right there in southern Mexico, rains itself out over the mountainous terrain, and then that's about it. So let's just go and look, take this back to the 24-hour mark, and compare it to the euro, which is going to have a different, um, it's going to default over to the 850 millibar chart. And that's just the way, by the way, just so you know, the free European products that Levi, Dr. Cowan, is using on his site, you don't have all the different layers available like you do if you paid for the ECMWF service from one of the pay sites like weathermodels.com uh, or Weatherbell or whomever, any of these other higher end sites where you can go in and look at all the different layers. Just kind of explaining that. But this helps us because you can see the structure at the 850 millibar level, which is about 5,000 feet up and 24 hours out. There is what would be Rick. Kind of looks like a, almost like a little goldfish down there. Maybe I'm just seeing things, but whatever. Uh, like the crackers you eat. Looks like a goldfish cracker. That's 24. There's 48. And then 72, and that's all we got on the Euro so far because it's only 2.13 in the afternoon Eastern time, and the frames are still rendering. But bottom line, that's 72 hours on the Euro, the GFS at 72 hours. It's knocking on the door of making landfall. So yes, there are some discrepancies, of course, with both the track and the intensity of what would be Rick. So if you were in Mexico... Stay tuned. This doesn't have an easy to understand forecast ending just yet. We'll have to just wait and see how it pans out. All right, so the Atlantic. This is interesting. You know, I talk about uh, the Storm 2K website a lot, and for good reason. Uh, as I've mentioned before, a lot of good, uh, dedicated, smart people that know what they're looking for. They're into this, and it's the old. You know, old school message board. This has been around this message board for a long time. I became a member in 2003. And as they say on NPR, full disclaimer, uh, Storm2K is a financial supporter through Patreon of this project. But that being said, I've been a member of and a participant long before that. And I like to look at the site because there's a good aggregation and a consensus of what people are talking about. There are a few pro-meteorologists on there that usually post under some other pseudonym, like a different screen name, so that they can keep their professional identity kind of hidden, but we know who they are. And then there's just amateurs, people that love to track this kind of stuff, whether it's winter storms, severe weather, and especially hurricanes. So that being said, this particular thread here that I follow is the 2021 Indicators thread of temperatures, Saharan air layer, pressure, shear, steering, instability, sat Im images, tweets from people, uh, even my updates get embedded in there. It's just nice. It's a nice place to look at everything all at once. So why am I harping on, on and on about this? Well, this person right here, Alpha 2 Omega, really seems to have a good grip on things. I like this paragraph here that basically the MJO looks like it is going to move into a phase that is more favorable for the Western Hemisphere to really get going, and specifically the Atlantic. And that is basically that it looks like the MJO is going to skip right over into phase one. And that is reflected in other graphics here. This is the CFS, Climate Forecast System, when this is from the 27th of October out to the 3rd of November. And this green is generally indicative of favorability. This is sinking air. This is rising air. So I'll put a little up arrow, down arrow for sinking air. And a tremendous area of rising air still over parts of the Indian Ocean. So it looks like at the end of October that the Atlantic will sort of have one last shot for a Hail Mary pass, to use a football analogy, or the full court shot or whatever you want to call it, to crank out a couple more systems and boost the ACE count a little bit, perhaps maybe give something of impact. And it's not just lower 48 that we're talking about here. Florida, the Gulf Coast, the East Coast of the U.S., this extends beyond U.S. interest because, you know, we've got a shipping crisis in the world right now with container ships, right? 
And so, yes, development outside of U.S. interests is important. Hurricanes tracking across the Caribbean, the open Atlantic, wherever, this kind of stuff matters. So it's a great thread here. I'm glad I picked up on it. Look at the ensemble guidance. It does look a little crazy, doesn't it? That's the day after tomorrow world right there where there's just 500 hurricanes. Um, but we're starting to see signals is the bottom line. And that is what I was looking at and looking for on this particular thread over at Storm 2K. So let's expand upon this, shall we? And we'll look at the ECMWF uh, prognostication, as it were, for the MJO. And it's forecasting a weakly amplified foray into phase eight and one. Goes right into one here. See, there's phase one. And what this means is the upward motion or divergent flow aloft where the air is spreading out moves into the areas where we watch for most development in the Western Hemisphere. The Caribbean, the Southwest Atlantic, maybe the Gulf of Mexico. It just shows us that the general agreement of the modeling, and you got the operational, the mean in there, that's the thicker line that I've highlighted in black, and then the ensembles, they all generally show, and I mean it's basically unanimous now, that we get a favorable pulse coming into the Western Atlantic Caribbean area by the end of the month. And if we couple that with what we already know, and that is these warm sea surface temperatures in here that we've been showing you relative to average, all of this is in place. So once it shuts down here, I think we're going to see an uptick here. It just makes sense logically. So that's what we will be watching for. And you can see it start to manifest itself in some of the operational guidance. Now the caveat here is we all know this is long way, a long way out in time. All right, what I'm going to show you. So let's just go through 12Z run today of the GFS operational model. 12Z, 850 millibars. We're looking for areas that kind of come together like that. That's the genesis of what will be Rick in the southeastern Pacific. You watched my videos enough. You know what we're looking for. So let's just scroll this out over the next two weeks. There goes Rick. You see it right there. And we look in the Atlantic. And there's a couple things as I stop it here. Strong ridging definitely prominent over the region so no big fronts coming down and sweeping across the region cooling things off it's a gradual process due to the lower sun angle but there's lots and lots of energy still down in the basin so we're waiting to see does something come along out to day six no nothing there just yet day seven now we start to see some changes just a little bit of a hint of a gyre setting up here in the Eastern Caribbean, this is a week out, and this is in that time frame, October 28th. And remember, we looked at the different uh, MJO uh, forecast, and they begin at the end of the month, roughly the last week of October, that the MJO starts to swing into this part of the world. All right, so this is down at the surface, roughly, or close to it, 5,000 feet. That's a week. Here's eight days, and you start to see what happens. Something starts to develop in the Eastern Caribbean and it goes on to do whatever and yes we'll see what happens. This is way out in time into the first part of November. But the interesting thing is it's been on there for the last several runs. We go back 24 hours not much hint of it there but by yesterday afternoon it really started to show up and this one got everybody's attention. We saw this uh, the run yesterday morning too. You remember that crazy run at uh, what was it 6z yesterday where the uh, model was developing something let's see this is today I'm looking for 6z yesterday there we go that one where it showed it way down across uh, the, the the Caribbean it shoved it down and did all that so this is my point you can say it's way out in time it's convective feedback there's too much shear blah 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 the operational guidance is starting to sense the change that the rest of the ensemble guidance is suggesting is coming. So that, to me, begins to help to develop these clues. And that's all it is. We're just looking to see, are there any clues out there that would suggest development beyond the five to seven day time frame? And the answer is yes, there is some hint of that. So it gives us something to watch for, right? It's just the method behind the madness sometimes. So we'll see what happens. Nothing to worry about now. And even if we look at this back to the 12Z today, 
and you say, well, look at that. It tries to develop something down there that looks concerning. It's far enough out into time that worrying about the details of it developing exactly right here is the part that is nonsense. Don't worry about that. Let's see if the pattern shows up first, which is what it should do based on what I showed you here and here and then we see if it starts to really manifest itself and something comes along to take advantage of that pattern. All right, elsewhere, this is pretty impressive. I wanted to show you this before I signed off. A satellite animation courtesy of the Weather Nerd site. This is the Pacific Northwest of uh, North America, in case you're wondering, well, what are we looking at? So here's Washington, Oregon, California, British Columbia and vicinity. And that is an impressive bomb cyclone sitting out over the cold waters of the North Pacific, the Northeast Pacific in particular. This is what it looks like on the analysis from the GFS. Again, here's Washington and Oregon right here for reference. Uh, Vancouver, etc., British Columbia. And we move this out into time. It comes in, mainly the energy, most of it, up into BC there. Uh, with different waves of the front coming in, more energy coming in. That's a, another stout, windy system coming in, one after the other. Good news to see for the Pacific Northwest and vicinity, as I pointed out a couple of times recently. We really need the rain out west and the snowpack, and this will help to do that. But you know, with that will come impacts, burn scar issues, flooding, windy, coastal problems, you name it. Uh, but it's good to see the rain and the moisture in general for that area. All right, all right, well, we covered a lot here today. Some of it kind of interesting as we look out into time. Uh, again, in summary, we'll keep an eye on what will eventually be Rick. And then I think towards Halloween, things could get interesting in the Atlantic Basin. And you know what, if they don't, they don't. It doesn't mean that they have to, but it is a window of opportunity. We'll see if the tropics takes advantage of that. That's what we do here. It's what the outlook and discussion is all about. And I'm glad you're here watching. I do appreciate it. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. It's always good to have you tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.